Okay, our poster presentation is on the process intensification by using the hybrid integrated fixed frame membrane bioreactor for treating of refinery wastewater. Uh, why we choose this process is because uh, the characteristics of the refinery wastewater uh, fluctuates rapidly daily and if we use a conventional activated sludge process uh, we need a very big plant so I will show to you what is the IFAS process in the next slide okay basically an uh, IFAS process is that we combine the conventional activated sludge and the biofilm technologies into one reactor by doing this we are taking the advantages of the conventional activated sludge and the biofilm process and what we do is that we add this growth media into the activated sludge tank and this become then a suspended and a fixed flame process so what is the advantages of the fixed flame process it offers a higher resistance to organic and hydraulic shock loadings as mentioned earlier because of the refinery wastewater with uh, a lot of uh, organic shock loadings and also hydraulic so this process will be better for use for the refinery wastewater and also because we have a media in the tank there's a longer sludge retention time by having a longer sludge retention time there's a strong nitrifying population of bacteria will enable the oxidation of the nitrogenous load then we have this uh, suspended phase which is the activated sludge process the mixed liquor suspended solid have a shorter sludge retention time for the organic remover so basically we are marrying the advantages of the suspended and the fixed free process the suspended process will do the majority of the organic remover which is measured by the DOD and the fixed frame process will do the majority of the nitrogen remover so what we have done is that we have set up a pilot plant uh, to study this process by using the actual wastewater from the refinery so we have a feed tank here where we feed in the actual refinery wastewater and we have a pre anoxic tank with a mixer but no media inside and we have an oxic tank and oxic tank too with a media and we supply air through the blowers and we have a media in the post anoxic tank and then of course we then we pump it to the MBR and then we have the filtrate and we also use this filtrate to do the chemical cleaning and of course uh, we also have a return sludge same as uh, activated sludge process uh, return activated sludge and we also have a recycle pump here to recycle some of these nitrates back to here for the nitrification. So uh, now we look at the results. Uh, we measure the organic matter by this uh, the COD, and as you can see, the COD fluctuates from about uh, 200 to as high as 700. As mentioned earlier, the refinery wastewater, the organic matters uh, fluctuates rapidly daily and you can see from this result is that almost all of them is below the limits of 100 ppm with the exception of one point here due to some experimental error the majority of them is below the limit so this shows that this process can treat the organic matter uh, in a very efficient manner Okay, now we come to the total nitrogen. Uh, initially here, we were doing some acclimatization of, for the bacteria to grow. And you can see again, uh, the feed, the total nitrogen again fluctuates you know, very rapidly up and down. And beginning, uh, there was not much uh, nitrogen removal you can see here. So uh, 
we have added this uh, acetic acid as a source of carbon for the bacteria in the post anoxic tank okay and when we uh, increase the dosage you can see that the performance in, uh, improved until it's almost uh, near this uh, limit here and you can see here so but we find that when we dose this uh, carbon by the using an acetic acid into the post anoxic tank it actually fouls up the membrane in the MBR system maybe uh, we found that maybe we have overdosed too much and carbon is a source of uh, food for the bacteria and that causes the bacteria fouling in the membrane so around here we changed the dosing point to the pre-anoxic tank but after changing to pre-anoxic we find that around here the performance was not good and we did a bit of uh, simulation studies and and we found that uh, actually by doing this here by dosing the acetic acid in the pre-anoxic tank there was no food or no carbon source in the post-anoxic tank so as a result there was no denitrification and we also found that in the pre-anoxic tank there was no media inside so without a media there was not sufficient bacterial growth in the pre-anoxic tank which caused this problem here so finally around here this period we decided after some simulation studies to add the acetic acid as a source of carbon in both the pre-anoxic tank and the post-anoxic tank and with that uh, you can see that straight away it achieved the limits here yeah. okay. okay then uh, we talk about the membrane performance uh, so uh, we look at this uh, the red color is the flux the net flux and we find that if we run around from 10 uh, here around 10 to around 15 uh, lmh and we measure the the membrane performance by the, the fouling is that we look at the trans membrane pressure the differential pressure and you can see that it's almost uh, constant below five we have, we have exception of one or two spikes so this proves that the membrane did not foul when we use this process for this yeah so in uh, conclusion uh, this uh, alpha system uh, offers a more suitable biological counterpart for the mem MBR membranes by providing a short SRT in the suspended phase for BUD removal, a longer SRT on the media for enhanced nitrogen removal, and a much better resilience to inlet contaminant fluctuations, and an overall lower MSS in the MBR tanks for reduced fouling tendencies in the MBR membranes. And to achieve the target nitrate values is possible by ensuring the optimum dosage acetic acid is dosed at both the pre and post anoxic tank and that media should be present in the post anoxic tank for the development of the biofuel. Thank you. How long?